Hi, this is Scott Grant. You're listening to The Scott Grant Show on 103.9 FM WSOS, and we are broadcasting from Stanfast Studios in beautiful downtown Ponte Vedra Beach. Uh, my guest today is Sally Constant, and Sally, you're, you're a local author. I am a local author, yes, Scott. Um, and you're mostly, I think, a poet, but I see that you've written a novel as well. Yes, I've written an, a novel, historical fiction, a small uh, poetry chapbook, and lately uh, a book called Random Reflections is uh, my, my take on a memoir composed of poetry and essays with some photos. Well, now you're you're one of the things that strikes me is that there are a lot of writers in our area, and I and I keep running in, into more of them. And I, you know, I've written a book, and uh, every time I turn around, I'm you know, there's another author. And you're part of an authors group out in Del Webb, and how many uh, how many people are in that group? We have about thirty people registered as members of our group. And how many of them uh, are actively writing? I would say everyone is writing in one form or another. Uh, it could be just small essays or poetry or short stories. Some of us are working on bigger pieces. And we just, um, 18 of us got together and contributed to a wonderful anthology filled with poetry, stories, and essays, and a uh, lovely anthology, which we're very proud of. That's neat. And everybody contributed to that, I guess. And then, uh, so that's a neat project for you guys to do together. I was at the Cultural Center probably about two or three weeks ago, and I did a presentation, uh, one of my historical presentations about called the Summer of 64, which is about some events that occur here, including uh, some of the civil rights activity. But afterward, one of the uh, guests walked up and asked me about writers groups, and he wants to get into one. And I said... Uh, I gave my card, and I don't think he reached out to us, but I said I'd find him one, because I also know uh, Vic DeGente, who, who writes novels and uh, for a long time was working at the uh, local library. Uh, do you, does your group invite people from outside Del Webb or outside the group to come visit? I mean, what's the, what are the rules of membership? They cannot be members, but they are welcome to visit. And also, if they have something to offer our group in the way of writing advice or talking about writing experiences, we will book them as a speaker. Yeah, and one of the one of your group members reached out to me and wanted me to come speak, and I had said yes, and then you had invited me as well. So it sounds like I'll be doing that. That'll be great. Yeah, I'd love to talk to you guys. Um, I, I'd love to hear your thoughts, too, about uh, the process. I think the process is, is fascinating. Now, you told me earlier that you were born in Queens. I was born in Brooklyn, New York. Oh, wow. But at age seven, we moved to Astoria, Queens, New York, just across the East River from Manhattan, and lived there until five years ago when my husband and I, encouraged by our son and family, moved down to this beautiful area. Yeah, it's really nice down here. We all like it down here. The weather's great. The taxes are great. There's a whole bunch of reasons to like this part of Florida. Um, Astoria. Now, is that the Astoria, the spot in the novel, The Great Gatsby, where the eyes, the, the doctor's eyes are? Is that in Astoria or is that near Astoria? I believe it's so many years since I've read it. Honestly, I don't want to commit myself, but the original Paramount Studios were in Astoria once upon a time. Okay, that's interesting. Well, I know he, he they drive through an area that's sort of run down. And I know at one point Astoria was sort of a uh, middle income, maybe even a lower middle income area. And I know it's really uh, picked up over the years. Right. And then you were also telling me that you went to uh, Cortland State. I did. I, I went to Cortland State between 1962 through 1966 to study to be a teacher. In those days was a teacher's college now called SUNY Cortland, and I had wonderful prep preparation for my career. Oh, that's great. Um, I think, you know, I said I, I went to Cornell, and I used to uh, drive through Cortland a lot. That was how you got north on 81. And for a, a period of time, a, probably a good year, I, ha I had a girlfriend in Cortland, and I would go up and see her a lot. So I, I knew the road from Ithaca to Cortland, uh, often uh, the snow-covered road from Ithaca to Cortland, because I, uh, I was there during the school year. So let's, let's talk a little bit about what you do 
um, my you've always presented yourself to me as being a poet. Yes. And that's is that your passion? Poetry is something I write when I'm very moved by emotion or circumstances. I never thought I had a novel in me, but a professor I studied with after I retired at the 92nd Street Y in Manhattan encouraged me to write a novel. He thought I had it in me, and it's been very appreciated. And, and how many, I see uh, four of them on the desk here, how many uh, books have you written? Three. Th this fourth one is the group anthology from the sure. Del Webb Ponte Vedra Writers Club. And how often does that club meet? We meet on the first Monday of every month from 10 to noon. And is that uh, more of like a club meeting or, or do you pass around manuscripts like a writer's group or, or both? No, we do have break off uh, response groups that are different. In our club, what we usually do is we start the meeting by welcoming new guests and then asking if anyone has something they'd like to share. And um, each month we have prompts which also you'll find in the back of Random Reflections, suggested prompts for writing, and we write 350 words or less in any genre, and we share them at the following meeting. Then we usually have a guest speaker who talks to us about their craft or their experience and then offers their books for sale and takes questions, and then we invite our speaker out to a local restaurant where we socialize. Oh boy, I'm getting a free lunch. Yes, you are. <laughs> That's great news. I, I, I'm, I'm even more excited now than okay. I was. <laughs> All right, um, we got to go to commercial. We will come back. I'm with Sally Wall Constein. This is uh, 103.9 FM WSOS. Hi, this is Scott Grant. You're listening to The Scott Grant Show on 103.9 FM WSOS. And I am again here with Sally Wall Constein. And during the break, we were talking about. Um, a, re a recollection that you have, and, and you've actually written about it in one of your books, uh, from 1964. And I don't know if you know this, but the year 1964 fascinates me. I have two of my presentations are about 1964. One about the um, activities here in, in our area, and the second is about the Beatles. And that's mostly a story about Miami, uh, Key West, and Jacksonville. Um, and I call that the Beatles in Florida because they make two trips to Florida and both of those are in 1964. Now you tell me a story about Bobby Kennedy. And uh, Bobby Kennedy runs for Senate in New York State in 1964. And he runs successfully for Senate in 1964. Yes. But it's, as we all know, because we know the Kennedys, the Kennedys aren't from New York. <laughs> <laughs> They're from Massachusetts. And he runs in New York because he can't run against either of the guys who were in Massachusetts, one of whom is his brother. Right. Ted, so Ted is already a senator in Massachusetts, and I believe the other guy's last name was Burke, but I, I'm not 100%, and, and uh, you sort of threw me. But in any event, so Bobby Kennedy, by the way, one of my favorite politicians ever. I just Bobby Kennedy uh, mm. really moved me when I was a kid. So Bobby Kennedy comes to Cortland. Yes. And he's going to give a speech. And uh, tell me, but you went to see it. Well, you know, in, in Cortland, we were all studying to be teachers, and my best friend was a history major, studying to be a history teacher, and she got a hold of me on campus in the middle of the day and said, Sally, Bobby Kennedy's downtown at the courthouse. Let's go downtown. So we ran down the hill, in those days I could run, and there he was, <laughs> looking so nice and a good-looking fellow and friendly and talkative, but there was a very small crowd because Cortland was a mostly a Republican area. But for us, it was a good experience. Yeah, that's interesting, uh, Cortland, a Republican area. Well, there are a lot of Republican areas, and there are also a lot of areas that are strongly Democrat. And, uh, um, you know, I think one of the problems with this country is that we are divided like that. Mm -hmm. And I often say, I mean, you know, something like 90 percent of the congressional districts in the United States are really not competitive between the two parties. So you, whoever wins the primary, uh, depending on the, the bias of that district, uh, will go on to win the general election. So um, do you remember anything Bobby said? He said he was pleased to meet us, that he was proud that we were studying to be teachers, that he thought it was an honorable profession. That's interesting. Uh, Bob, Bobby Kennedy's a neat guy. I mean, you know, you got you got John and a lot of people, um, particularly now, uh, JFK seems to be getting more popular. Um, 
but uh, you don't hear as much about Bobby. And, and as I said earlier, mm-hmm. um, it may just be my age. I think uh, I would have been eight years old uh, when Kennedy, when Bobby Kennedy was shot in Los Angeles. Mm. Uh, and I remember that it really, and that was in 68, obviously, uh, that, that, that really uh, hit me hard. And, and there was some aspect of Bobby Kennedy when I was young that I, I, I really liked. I really liked Bobby Kennedy. So um, I've written a book. It's called The Merchant of Death is Dead. Have you, have you seen that before? Have you read it? No, I was just peeking at it now. Some interesting stories in there. Uh, the one story that uh, the Merchant of Death is Dead is is the first story, and these are newspaper uh, columns that I wrote and had published in various newspapers around here. But the Merchant of Death is Dead is the story of Alfred Nobel, and uh, Alfred Nobel wakes up one day in Paris in eighteen eighty five, roughly, and reads his own obituary. Wow! And the obituary is entitled. The Merchant of Death is Dead. Wow. Which sounds more lyrical in the original French, Le Marchand de la Mort et Mort, but still not what you want to read about yourself. No. It it goes on to say that the man who's invented more ways to kill people than anyone else in history has passed away. Uh, Nobel invented dynamite, and that's what he's most famous for, and that's where he made his fortune. So he... uh, he sets out to change his legacy. He doesn't want to be known as the Merchant of Death, so he gives essentially ninety percent of his estate to the Nobel Prizes. I see. And we continue to award those Nobel Prizes to this day. Yes. And if you ask people who's Alfred Nobel, they'll say he's the guy that gave the money to the Nobel Prizes. They're not probably going to say he's the guy that invented TNT. And part of the story is that you can reinvent yourself. So you, you work as a teacher for 33 years, you move down here to sunny Florida, and you become... A writer. And, and how does that feel? I saw the smile on your face. It feels great. Actually, my novel had written just before we came here, and now here, when we came to find a place to live, I saw that Del Webb had a writer's club, and I said to my husband, let's get a house here. Oh, you, you picked the house because of the writer's club. Well, it helped. It's a gorgeous place to live, but yes. And then um, I was inspired more to write poetry and essays and to encourage group members to do the same because I became president for three years. And then my random reflections are essays and poems I've written over many years. Interesting. So you've always written poetry? Yes. Uh, When? Do you recall the first poem you wrote? Yes. uh, I think I was in elementary school. Interesting. And um, I think it went like this. I like to read books very much. They are so much fun. And it ended with, I just don't like to run, something like that. That's funny. <laughs> That's really funny. Yeah. So you're, uh, um, I, I write, write one poem in my life, and I, I, it's one of the many things I wish I could find. And I actually write that um, uh, sometime in the early 1980s when I'm dating that girl from Cortland. Uh, and so... Uh, uh, I don't know if she inspired it or not, but it was a it was a good poem. I wish I could find it. She was your muse, probably on some level. Uh, the it's funny the the that that poem was entitled "Pain," so oh. we we know what kind of muse she was. Well, <laughs> <laughs> let me tell you, very strong emotions are very good for poetry. I think you know it's often the case when I write or when I give us uh, lectures or speeches. Um, there's one thing that sort of uh, gets me and it's often a picture or a single quote and I think that particular poem there was I can't remember much of it but I think there was one line I really really liked all right it's amazing how fast these times go by Uh, we need to go do a commercial break Uh, Sally thank you for being on the show and uh, we loved having you I love being here thank you